Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share my week in Cardiff, Wales. Cardiff was never on my itinerary of places to visit on this trip, but due to some changes earlier in the trip, I made a stop here in the capital city of Wales. It was nice to go into the city with very little plans, so I was able to take my time focusing on a few different attractions versus packing every day with activities. On my first full day, I went to the Cardiff Castle. The castle was originally built in the late 11th century by Norman invaders on top of a 3rd century Roman fort. Further construction took place in the 12th and 13th centuries, and the castle has passed through many hands throughout the centuries. In the 20th century, the 4th Marquess of Butte inherited the castle. During the Second World War, air raid shelters were built in the castle where they could hold up to 1,800 people. Today the castle is a popular tourist attraction and is the highlight to many trips in Cardiff. At the time of this upload, ticket prices are £14.50 for adults, which also includes a free audio tour which can be done on your cell phone. If you want a fully guided tour, they are available for an additional £4 for adults. When I visited, it was only a few days before the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, and the castle was preparing to host a concert in celebration. Prince William, Kate, who was at the time the Duchess of Cambridge, Prince George, and Princess Charlotte were all in attendance at the concert, which took place on the 4th of June. The next day I walked around Cardiff Bay. The bay is home to many fun shops, restaurants, and notable buildings in Cardiff. The Senate building hosts the Welsh Parliament and is an architectural marvel to walk by if you are in the area. The Norwegian Church Arts Centre is a rescued wooden church that was rebuilt in 1992. Children's author Roald Dahl attended this church when he lived in Cardiff as a child. Another notable building is the Wales Millennium Centre, home to the Welsh National Opera. Opened fully in January 2009, the centre is home to opera, ballet, dance, and musical productions year-round. If you're a fan of the arts, it's a nice building to take a wander in for a few minutes, and if you're lucky, maybe even catch a show. After exploring the bay for a few hours, I walked through the many arcades Cardiff is known for. There are seven Victorian and Edwardian 
arcades. Each arcade is home to local eateries and retailers. In fact, there are over a hundred eateries and retailers scattered across the seven arcades. Wales outside the road right now. I've actually been here a few days, but I haven't really vlogged. But yeah, I wasn't planning on coming here, but here we are trying to figure out what to do. Today I am taking, I don't even want to call it like a day trip. I mean, it's just like slightly outside of the city center, going to a castle. And then I'm gonna walk around some of the trails there. It is technically the start of a bank holiday weekend here, but I still have to work because my company's in the US. But yeah, I'll show you around. And we'll do some voiceover. And I'm still trying to get used to this vlogging thing. The Castaf Cock is just outside the main city of Cardiff but can be reached via train and then a 20 to 30 minute walk. If you have the time, I definitely recommend making a day trip out to visit because the castle itself is really cute and there's also great walking paths around the area. The first castle was built by Normans after 1081 to protect Cardiff. It was abandoned soon after and was maybe destroyed in the native Welsh rebellion of 1314. In 1760, the castle ruins were acquired by John Stuart the third Earl of Butte. In 1848, John Crichton Stewart started having the castle rebuilt, which was completed in 1891 after his death. In 1950, the castle was put into the care of the state. The high Victorian interiors are considered to be one of the greatest Victorian triumphs of architectural composition, according to the historian David McLeese. The castle has been used as a location for several film and television programs, including several episodes of Doctor Who. Tickets to visit the inside of the castle are £8.70 and include an audio tour. It doesn't take more than 60 to 90 minutes to visit, but it is really worth the trip. If it's a nice day, I also recommend walking around one of the various walking paths around the castle. They offer a nice escape into nature and are on relatively flat and easy terrain. Taking a little hike. So I'm now with the castle. Now I'm taking a little hike um, around the grounds. I think I'm going to be going on like the two mile path, but we'll see. But it is beautiful out here. Next morning, I went to the Museum of Cardiff. The museum explores the city's story and heritage and is a good place to visit to gain more understanding about the city. The most notable attraction in the museum is that it's actually housed in the historic old library, which is worth a visit in itself. It is free to enter and explore. <music> Thank you. 
Then I headed over to Roth Park. Throughout the video, you may have noticed these Snoopy statues featured. When I visited, they had these all around the city and surrounding areas as part of a dog's trail. It was created to celebrate the Dogs Trust's new rehoming center in Cardiff. It was a limited time event and actually came during the last few days of the trail, but it was fun to see all the colorful and creative statues everywhere. There was even an app you could use to track your progress and unlock rewards. Roth Park is a large park owned by the city. It has a Victorian atmosphere and is a popular place to hang out with friends, go fishing or rowing, or look for countless wildlife. The park was lively when I visited, and it was so fun to see people out with their family and friends enjoying the nice day. On my final full day, I visited the Cardiff Market, which is a popular spot to grab fresh produce, fish, meat, and other trinkets. When I visited, the market was beginning to wind down for the day, but I can imagine it's pretty popular to go to when it first opens. My second and final stop of the day was to the National Museum, Cardiff. This is also another free museum that is more of a natural history museum. I didn't stay too long admittedly, but it was nice to wander for an hour. Overall, while Cardiff wasn't my favorite stop on my trip, I did enjoy my time here. The city has a lot to offer and visiting just before the Platinum Jubilee celebration was exciting. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more travel content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I only have two more videos from this trip so be sure to check those out coming soon. Thanks again and remember to wander far and wander often. Thank you.